the Forty or Tea podcast. I suppose, like, do you have anything, any aspects um, that you think autistic people show that may, might make us a lot more prone to gaslighting? Hmm. This is my processing stim. <laughs> <laughs> a bit like mr birds <laughs> yeah I was, gonna, I was gonna say uh, yeah <laughs> hmm, hmm. smithers <laughs> okay got it so i think one of the main parts is obviously we're very vulnerable when we do misread situations and we do shut down but also i think sure. it's partly how we process information so I think autistic people process information in like a fact first manner so everything is process as a fact first and then if we've got the capability we then can process like the emotional the emotions and the memory and the logic that sort of ties in with that fact so it's mm. for things like this just as so it makes a bit more sense like if someone wants to say oh it's raining cats and dogs like my i will process that as fact and be yeah. looking out the window for the cats and dogs because I haven't yet processed the logic and the emotional memories to be like, yeah. nah, that's not possible. <laughs> well, not anymore now that we don't have thatched roofs or whatever. But um, <laughs> oh. but I do think we do process things in a fact first manner. So, and the problem with that is that with these relationships, <laughs> everyone around us is always right. Everyone else is the correct person. Everyone else is the wrong yeah. model. We're always taught to be invalidated and to yeah. sh be sh ashamed of who we are and that we should change no matter what. And part of it is also the justice seeking. We want to change and be good because that's part of our brain. Like mm. everything has to mm. be processed fact first as a justice sort of way. And this does mean that anyone who wants to take advantage of us more or less can because we're processing their, their behavior and their mistreatment of us as a fact this is something that should happen. Like this is okay and I deserve it, but also I'm just as seeking to make it a reality. And mm. because we get shut down at the fact processing stage, we don't always process the next bit with the emotions, the logic and the memories of past experiences that could otherwise teach us that this fact isn't right. Yeah, Does, I don't know if that makes sense. It's kind no, of how no, it I makes sense. how I process yeah. it in my brain. <laughs> no, like, it's um, mm. I think like the the way that I think about it's a bit bit kind of different. Like I I kind of I take on board what people say to me directly, mm. and um, I don't always like compare that to the way that they're saying the thing or the context of the situation. Mm. And if I'm in a relationship where I trust another person and I feel strongly towards another person, um, you know, it's it's more likely that I'll take on board what what people tell me than than I won't. Mm. Um, there's been lots of situations as well from, um, you know, that happen to a lot of autistic people in terms of like um, bullying or, um, you know, uh, difficult situations at school and not not and having lots of memories of not really understanding social situations and yeah. saying the right thing or or doing the right thing with within friendships and relationships and and school life and i think sometimes that combination of us really focusing on the direct language it allows us to be manipulated a bit more easily yeah and at the same time like we're less likely to take what we think and what, and what we feel is as seriously because of the, of the like the past bias, the past kind of experiences that we've had. We've been taught to invalidate every feeling or thought that we've ever had because we've always been taught yeah. they're wrong anyway. So why would mm. we believe our own thoughts that are like, hey, this isn't right? <laughs> what you said was what I was trying to say. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think I think there's there's also the aspect of um, Alexa Fymir as well that can mm. can compl complicate things because definitely. Like, if you say something and you 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 believe that it's right, like if someone sort of disregards that and and either intentionally or unintentionally gaslights you into thinking that it isn't, um, 
you know, you, you don't necessarily have like the immediate emotional response of being able to like put a boundary in place and say like, yeah. no, don't tell me what I thought. Like I know what I thought. Like mm. <laughs> you don't necessarily have that, and it's it's more of a thing where you kind of just go along with it, and then you kind of think about it in a week or a few days, mm. and you're like, hmm. You know, I did feel too good about that situation. I felt like they weren't really listening to me. And then you go back and, like, <laughs> flips over. Whoa! That was so yep. loud. <laughs> Sorry. Hey up, YouTube. Hope you have enjoyed this podcast clip so far. And if you have, why not check out the full episode, which you can find on my YouTube channel or on other streaming services like Google, Apple, um, Spotify, you can find it pretty much anywhere you want to. If you have enjoyed this, make sure to like, subscribe, drop a comment down below, even if it's something simple like sending me a heart or an emoji, it really, really does help me with the algorithm. All of my links to my socials, like my daily Instagram blog posts, are down in the description. But other than that, I hope you enjoy the rest of this clip. It's, yeah, to totally true though, isn't it? It's, no, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> no, it's, um... Yeah, so so well <laughs> when you come back and when you try to approach something that, that happened before that kind of seemed to be something that both parties agreed on, people don't tend to respond very well to that. So you know, sometimes yeah. when you come back after a couple of days, a few weeks and say, like, actually, hey, this wasn't right, and you know, you try to put that boundary in place after the fact, yeah. it's not always the easiest thing to do. Yeah. And it's it's that background processing because it takes such a long time sometimes. Yeah. And I feel that's what I was sort of talking about earlier, that mind wandering stimulation, like music therapy and art therapy mm. and sort of daydreaming. It sort of helps us with those background processes. It's not always just problems that we're solving in like real time, but it can be the experiences that we had with relationships where we sort of or social situations where we know something wasn't quite quite right, but we don't yeah. have a quite process what it is and what boundaries to set, if any. And it does, it takes a long time because there's always such there's like a chronic overwhelm <laughs> when you're all you are autistic. Mm. It's complicated. Yeah, and it's not to mention like the mental health difficulties that we can have around anxiety, like Oh my goodness. Anxiety <laughs> makes you question yes. makes you question yourself anyway. Yes. So it's when you're so anxious and when you're feeling down about yourself, you might be like depressed or something. Mm. Someone comes up to you and says that hey, this isn't actually the reality of things. You're more likely to go like, Yeah, well, actually my head's all over the place. I actually don't know. Um like I'm I'm so dysregulated. Like I you know, so it kind of I think that's another aspect that can make us feel a bit more or be, be a bit more vulnerable to that that thing. It's so true because I'm always the first to be like, oh no, I'm 100% in the wrong. <laughs> yeah. Even if I probably wasn't and didn't have anything to do with me, I always assume that I'm the person who did the wrong thing and mm. said the wrong thing. And I will always be the one who will agonize over it and try and work out why. And it will just stay with me for months, <laughs> years, eternity, just always processing it. And that, is partly why it makes me very vulnerable to this sort of mm. like the make crimes and the unintentional gaslighting because I can't well, always tell. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's that's an interesting part because I know that that make crime is something that a lot of autistic people might experience. 